Welcome to The Motivational Midwife. My name is Lynn Jones and today we're going to be looking at the third stage of labour. Okay, so let's look at the third stage of labour. So firstly, as always, what is it? Well, it's that part from the birth of the baby until the placenta cord and membranes are delivered and also control of bleeding. And we've got several options here. We've got physiological, so basically nature takes its course and we don't interfere. Um, and active management, um, which it seems to be the, the most common management of third stage, certainly within a hospital environment across the UK currently. And so what's happening physiologically? Well, you've got that continued contraction and retraction. Um, and what's actually happening then is it's reducing the placental site. Um, so you've got impeded venous drainage in the maternal uh, villous um, spaces, intervillous spaces, and then you'll get separation. So if I just play this little video, that I made here, it does kind of show you what's happening. So as the um, space reduce, as the, the contraction and retraction happens, you can see that the, um, the sticky label is getting pushed off the balloon. And that's essentially what happens to the placenta as the area that it's attached to, because the placenta is not elastic, where of, of course the uterine muscle is. So as the placenta, as the uterus gets smaller, the area gets smaller, it's essentially pushing the placenta away. And separation normally starts in, in the centre, not always, but usually starts in the centre. So as it's pushed away, uh, then you get um, a little clot, a retroplacental clot forming behind the placenta. And of course, as that gets slightly bigger, um, it, the added weight is going to actually um, help uh, shear that placenta away from the uterine wall. And then you also get the formation of um, living ligatures. And so what's happening, of course, is, as the uh, muscle fibers shorten, um, it restricts the uh, flow of um, maternal blood to the uterus and the placental site. So that will that will essentially reduce the amount of um, blood loss. So what's happening is, that, so this is our little blood vessel here. And we've got all those uh, crisscross muscle fibers. If you remember from your um, anatomy and physiology, you've got uh, transverse fibers and you've got um, a, longitudinal fibers and you've got oblique fibers. And those muscle fibers, what they essentially do as they contract and retract, they squeeze down on these blood vessels that would have been attached to the placenta. But once the placenta is, is uh, gone, so they're actually essentially sealing the end. They're squashing the end down so that minimizes the blood flow, if that makes sense. Um, And signs of separation, then what will we see? Well, of course, as it separates, you're going to get uh, a, a small gush uh, of blood vaginally. And, that, and the key word is small gush of blood. It isn't a, 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 tor a torrential pouring of blood. There is a small gush of blood. Um, if you had your hand on the, the uh, around about the umbilicus, you would feel the uterus rising up to meet you. Uh, as the placenta goes into the lower segment, then the uterus will rise up. And... Of course, if the placenta has dropped into the lower segment, then you're going to get lengthening of that cord as well. It is important to wait for signs of separation, whatever your management is, because uh, until you know it's separated, you potentially interfering before that is going to cause you more problems. So if we look uh, first at active management, generally active management um, is, is usually 
um, completed within 20 or 30 minutes. In, in my experience, to be fair with active management, the placenta is normally um, out within about five or 10 minutes of the baby. Um, it's associated with giving some sort of oxytocic drug, um, so something to make the uterus contract, and that's usually given with the anterior shoulder of the, uh, as the anterior shoulder is being born, or certainly very shortly after the baby's been born. Um, it was historically associated with early clamping and cutting of the cord. However, now that we do delayed cord clamping, um, we we don't clamp and cut the cord quite so um, so early. Um, but it doesn't delay giving the oxytocic drug. And then um, we essentially extract the placenta by a method called controlled cord traction. And that, uh, oh, and I noticed my spelling's shocking at that point. Um, either you um, wrap your fingers, the cord around your fingers, uh, and you do what's called guard the uterus. So you'd have the other hand, just um, adding a little bit of counter pressure um, to you applying gentle down, gentle is the key word as well, downward traction. Um, and that's called a Brandt and Andrews method. Um, and so essentially, we're not getting the mother to do anything, we're extracting the, um, the placenta. Uh, and as I say, it is important that you've waited for those signs and symptoms. If you are trying to do controlled cord traction on a uterus that is not well contracted, you run the risk of causing a uterine inversion. So in, in essentially turning the uterus inside out, which is an obstetric emergency. And then our physiological or expectant management. So the cord is, is left intact. We're not cutting it and <clears throat> until, and, and now there's varied um, theories around this. Uh, a lot of people will just, leave the cord until it stops pulsating and then clamp and cut it and still say it's physiological. Uh, my personal uh, opinion is that if we're doing a true physiological management, then we shouldn't be cutting the cord at all. We should just until the placenta is actually out. Uh, and certainly if I'm undertaking physiological or expectant management, I don't usually cut the cord until um, the placenta is actually birthed. We're not using uh, oxytocic drugs at all, it can, and, and subsequently, of course, it can take longer, so often up to an hour. And the placenta is birthed by maternal effort. We're not interfering, we're not fiddling with the, the fundus, so we're not poking her uterus all the time to see what it's doing. Uh, and mothers are usually in a much more upright position um, for physiological management. Um, of placenta. When we're doing controlled cord traction, when we're undertaking controlled cord traction, the mother's usually semi-recumbent. Um, but with physiological management, you really want to uh, create the right environment that's going to keep the oxytocin flowing. So, um, you know, plenty of skin to skin, early breastfeeding. If she's not breastfeeding, if she wants to bottle feed, then she could just do a bit of nipple stimulation. That will often help as well. Um, Make sure her bladder is emptied because a full bladder is going to um, hold that placenta up as well. Um, sit her on a bedpan if she wants, or um, <clears throat> on a, certainly in a more upright position, squatting. Uh, and she will very often uh, tell you that she can feel something sitting there. And then you just encourage her to, to push the placenta out, essentially. So, the most common uh, method of the placenta actually coming out is the Schultz method. So that would be where it's separated in the center. And so you see uh, the, the cord and the membranes coming through first. Matthews Duncan, or it's sometimes called Dirty Duncan, is where it's, it's essentially it's sliding down. So you've got the plus the um, maternal surface coming out first so you can see it's it's a lot more messy um, and then once the placenta is birthed then it's very important that you carefully examine that placenta and the membranes to ensure that it is complete and there are no abnormalities there that you would uh, be concerned about uh, no signs of infection so is it you know is it offensive does it look um, healthy 
if she's a smoker, you may see lots of um, calcified or infarcted uh, areas within the placenta, but uh, I will do another video on e examination of the placenta, so I'm not going to go into it too much here. And what about our care during third stage? Um, so observations, it is, it's, it is important because um, third stage is probably from a blood loss perspective obviously is quite a um a risky stage uh most management as i say within a hospital environment tends to be active management and that's because the evidence suggests that it, there is a reduction in um blood loss with active management. However, when you look at the evidence, um, certainly um, below a litre, there is, is, is some reduction in um, the amount of blood lost, but above a litre, there's no st significant um, statistical difference within the, the amounts of blood loss with active versus expected management. And obviously you would expect over uh, there to be, without the use of drugs, you would expect the blood loss to be slightly higher with the physiological um, management however that's not always the case um, also when you um something to be mindful of of course is when we're having that sort of shearing of the placenta coming away um, there is the potential at that point for fetal blood from the placental um site to to feed back into the maternal circulation which is relevant particularly if you have a rhesus negative woman um so observations are quite important so we because you can have um concealed bleeding going on uh in internally so it is important that we keep um a close eye on her so um it's useful i think you know if your um placenta particularly with an active management hasn't birthed within about the first 5 or 10 minutes then you know it's it's prudent i would say to undertake a pulse and blood pressure um, and respiration rate uh, just to, to to make sure there's nothing you're missing there uh, and certainly obviously as the as uh, time goes on the longer it, it takes for that placenta to to birth then uh, the more frequent i would say you should be uh, monitoring her well-being you know what's her color does she look well is she talking to you what's her level of consciousness um, uh, and this would be the same whether you're having active or expectant management. You know, you need to keep a, a careful um, observation on the woman and make sure that uh, you're not missing anything there with that. Estimation of blood loss, your uh, estimated blood loss in this is we are seriously very bad at estimating blood loss, really, unless we weigh it. Um, we're not very good at estimating blood loss at all. We do tend to underestimate blood loss. Uh, and it is important because obviously, although we have all that extra circulating volume and women do um, <laughs> cope with actually quite large uh, blood loss physiologically quite well, um, it is important that we um, try and be as accurate as possible with the blood loss because it does potentially have implications for her well-being. Once you, you have um, the placenta safely delivered, it's important that you do a thorough examination of the perineum and vagina. Um, and that should be done ideally with good lighting, good analgesia um, to make sure that uh, there is no trauma that, that requires repair, because that can also impact on uh, the blood loss for the woman as well. And then very importantly, of course, documentation. So make sure you have documented um, whether you've used active management, whether you, she's had expected management, um, anything that you've um, done, changes position, uh, encouraging her to void, whether or not she's needed to have her bladder emptied by us, so an, an in and out catheter, um, whether the baby's gone to the breast, um, as well as the completeness of the placenta cord and membranes and how many vessels are in that cord and whether or not she's sustained any perineal or vaginal trauma um, that's needed repairing. And there you have it, third stage of labour. I hope you found that useful. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please do so. Look for us on Facebook at The Motivational Midwife, and I look forward to seeing you next time.